Are you new to wine? Have you been drinking wine for a long time? Well, this episode is geared a little bit more towards the beginner and even the intermediate level wine drinker uh, than it is uh, for those who have been around wine for a while. We're going to look at the, the top 10 wine etiquette tips. This one's going to be relatively short and sweet. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. wine consultants. Uh, as we're learning more about wine together, there are hundreds of do's and don'ts related to wine. If you're not careful, you can get so overwhelmed with all of that that you, know, you can lose the mystery and fun in drinking your wine. To clear all the, the clutter and, and simplify things, I've narrowed it down to these 10 wine etiquette tips. As we go through this, this particular list, if you like what you hear, click like subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. Also, make sure you share this with your friends. I'm sure they would appreciate it and I would too. The first tip is hold your wine glass by the stem, not the bowl. Holding it by the bowl causes the wine to get warmer uh, quicker. You end up losing the, the aromas and flavors much more quickly. The second tip is always pour uh, the wine for others before you pour your own wine. <laughs> Enough said on that. Uh, the third tip is when tasting wine, swirl the wine gently in your glass. This releases the aromas and flavors, allowing the wine to open up. Uh, it gives uh, you, you more of a realistic assessment of the wine. Now, oh, actually, a little trick of the trade is there are five S's of wine tasting. Uh, to see, you basically are looking at the wine to make sure there's nothing uh, like cork in the wine. Uh, you're also checking out the color. Uh, we'll get into that in another video. Uh, number two is swirl, like I just showed you a minute ago. Uh, it, you'll, you'll give uh, the wine some air. The third is sniff. Generally, you're checking for, for two things. Is it flawed and are there fruit and vegetable, herbs and spice aromas you're going to be picking up or smelling? The fourth, fourth S is sip. You're just checking out to see what it tastes like. Is it sweet, fruity? Uh, what kind of body does it have? Full or light? And does it have tannins, big or, or uh, moderate tannins? Five is savor. This is sort of your overall impression of your last impression of the wine. Okay, getting back to our, our etiquette tips. Number four is avoid wearing strong perfume or cologne when you're tasting or assessing your wine. This will interfere with the aromas and flavors and tastes. Uh, number five has to do with the proper way to clink glasses for a toast. For every person you clink glasses with, make eye contact with that person and do not take a sip until after the toast is given. Typically the person who is giving the toast will raise their glass and take a sip. That's when you take your sip. So how are you doing there? Is this information helpful? If it is, right. Asty in the comments below. Number six is, if you're at a restaurant and are unsure uh, which wine to choose or drink uh, with your meal, ask the sommelier or the server for their recommendation. It's just as simple as saying to the server, I'm planning to have the lasagna. Which wine would you recommend? Or, I'd like uh, to order the, the sea bass. Which wine do you think would go well with that? You know, even talk it up with, with the people you're with. Uh, let the experience be social. Invite people uh, into the, the fun of creating the perfect pairing. Number seven is when attending a wine tasting, start with the lighter wines and progress to the heavier ones. Uh, this applies to just reds or just whites or if you're uh, dealing with a variety. Also, you want to taste your white wines uh, before you taste your reds. Number eight is whether you're at a vineyard or a wine tasting, don't be timid or afraid to ask questions about the wine or the winemaking process. Remember, the people working there love wine and want to help you 
love it more. Number nine is if you're hosting a wine tasting, it's always a good idea to provide a spit bucket uh, for guests. Uh, uh, and actually this is for the people who, who want to taste a whole variety of wines but don't want to drink as much. So uh, by the way, a spit bucket uh, is also known as a dump bucket. And actually a spit bucket could be virtually anything from a, a couple of extra glasses, several pitchers, even a couple of flower pots. Anything would work for a spit bucket or a dump bucket. Uh, additionally, before you get started, let everybody know what they are and tell everybody where they're located on the tables. Before I get to number 10, let me ask you, is there a tip that you would like to, to pass on to the rest of us, to the rest of the posse? If there is, please write it in the comments below. I'm sure everybody would appreciate it. Okay, number 10. Number 10 is know your limits and drink responsibly. And if you're hosting a tasting, always make sure that you communicate this tip to those who are tasting. Well, there you have it. The top 10 wine etiquette tips for beginners. Until next time, cheers. Hey Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please consider hitting subscribe. Also, click here to check out our new online shop. We have a great lineup of wine-related items that will help you get the most out of your wine experience. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.